Good morning and welcome to the Lord's house. Good morning. Today's worship follows the order of divine service, setting one holy communion. The first Sunday following the festival, following the festival portion of the year, uh, last Sunday, of course, being Holy Trinity, and now we are in the life of, and growth of the church, of God's Spirit through His Word, now guiding and nurturing our lives and continuing that ongoing witness to others that they too may know their Lord and Savior and have the wonderful life and forgiveness which are in his name. May God bless that message to our hearts this day with the title, Faith and Life Beyond This World's Affliction. Anyway, welcome to all of you. Our opening hymn is The Tree of Life, number 561. Thanks. 
stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority of his word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful redemption. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of 
victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Bless begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this second Sunday after Pentecost is according to Genesis chapter 3, reading verses 8 through 15. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, 
Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. On your wondrous works I will meditate. The epistle reading, also the text on which today's message is based, is according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 through 5, verse 1. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent which is our earthly home, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able. Alleluia! Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Alleluia. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him, and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. 
But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As you are seated, worship now continues with the hymn of the day, 668, Rise to Arms, with prayer employ you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's message is entitled, Faith and Life Beyond This World's Affliction. Let us pray. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus cried out on the cross on our behalf. So be with us also in dark moments, struggle and strife, disillusionment, fear, and oppression. Grant your word to defeat that strong man. So plunder his house and bring us home to your kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. It has been a week of very trying news. Conscience striking news. News that begs remorse of us as members of our nation, Canada, that treated indigenous nations and their children with terrible indignity carelessness and abandon, even while efforts to force change their cultures to accommodate Western culture took away not only their freedoms, but sought to strip them of their nation's identities. Those 215 pairs of children's shoes encircling burning fires seek to draw forth recognition by all of us of the systemic treatment of recent past that subjugated them as broken peoples, worthless cultures. Now the truth of their stories is coming out. It is sting of a truth that seeks reconciliation, not only in word or gesture, but in a fair and fitting, ongoing, growing respect and dignity to be accorded them as human beings belonging to First Nations. Their treatment by the culture I am part of leaves me saddened and upset. There's another side to the pain this has brought forward. The pain of Roman Catholics who are disillusioned by the church's association in what certainly shows forth as heartless and loveless travesty of inhumane treatment that has unfolded in full public view. And the side that rifles through me is also that I care about the faith in the Lord Jesus that is smeared by these associations. I detest the sin that entrapped and blinded people I want to believe we're a Christian. I want to believe that there were Christians present in these situations who did care and communicated care. Indeed, the Christians of each and every culture share something greater even than emotional, I mean, than national or ethnic identity. It is the identity of being a child of God redeemed and reconciled with the true God. This God is the creator of all peoples. His great commission reaches through his redeeming love to enfold all nations. His Holy Spirit imparts his precious gift of faith in his beloved Son, God with us, Jesus the Savior. Jesus is the one anointed to bear our sins and so to suffer and die, receiving in our place the wrath of God against all sins. The humble manner of various First Nations chiefs who I saw and heard interviewed touched me by their soft-spoken yearning for the truth, first simply to be recognized for what it is. They affirm these lives lost and plead they now not be put aside from memory. 
They are willing to share the pain with us. Invite us to admit and embrace the pain of loss, to see it for what it is, with the follow-through to take lasting steps to reconcile, to set right these injustices. They know the history cannot be undone. No eye-for-eye, tooth-for-tooth kind of retribution can undo the hurt and loss that has happened. Splatson Chief Wayne Christian spoke that we see and realize the deeds his people have come through. Not only the buried children now to be searched for, for who and where they were, to be acknowledged as human beings, but the multiple generations of their people, perhaps five generations or more, that have been stripped of their way of life. Reparations? Vengeance? I didn't hear hatred. Rather, there was considered sharing of pain of drawing me and our outside cultures to consider their humanity. That consideration moves toward reparations for their living situations, like clean water and being treated with dignity, in contrast to the racism exposed, such as that of Joyce Echaquan, now or in being neglected of medical treatment. Missing women, taken advantage of, beaten, raped, seen as low-value humans, not worth the time and effort to find out, to seek truth, to do justice. These cries need to be heard and not forgotten. Honesty and care. Love. The spiritual needs of people of every background truly come forward in every need. The Lord Jesus Christ, who has called me to faith, who has washed and cleansed you also, dear brothers and sisters, in his name, is the same Lord of all the nations. His call deals with the realities of every people, fallen, broken, stripped of our lives, guilty of sin, embittered by unfair treatment against us. This is ultimately the plight of us all. We have sinned. Our attention has focused on ourselves as in control, rather than to acknowledge and obey and love the God who has given us life and all things. Unbelief in him, belief in our own ways instead. It's the recipe of the travesties that have destroyed and continue to sever relationships and peoples, life and hope, that sets hearts cold, that rob joy, that strip away peace, that crush trust, that delete meaning and belonging. Woe is me, Isaiah moaned in the light of the triune God. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. I deserve death. There is no exception. All men die, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In eternal contrast, there is the wonder of God's power at work through the gospel of his beloved son. It is the power of his self-sacrificing love for us in this terrible and terribly lost situation in life destitute and abandoned. God's word addresses all people with new hope and life. He declares for your heart and mine and the hearts of every persecuted soul, faith and life beyond this world's affliction. 
This is the amazing and never ceasing call of God himself. He calls to renew us when all hope and our human dignity and goodwill itself is lost. The word of God speaks through Paul, the untimely apostle, simply yet with conviction and courage. It's time to hear God at work with pure resolution to care, to renew, to reconcile. He calls all people to be reconciled back in relationship with him. So the words stream forth from Paul's pen, without question gushing forth from the spirit of Jesus Christ to heal and soothe wounded souls and make them alive again. Listen to the word of the Lord. I invite you to hear and pay attention to the whole context of today's epistle reading, beginning at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and reading through chapter 6, verse 10. And I'll include the titles that are included in the English Standard Version. The Light of the Gospel. <clears throat> Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Treasure in jars of clay. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. And now again, the words from the epistle reading. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. 
For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. The Ministry of Reconciliation. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others but what, we are, but what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, being foolish, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now chapter 6 to verse 10. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But we, as servants of God, we commend ourselves but as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, 
knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. The truth of God turns our lives around. God, in truth, placed the just punishment for your sins and mine, and our culture and every culture, on his Son, Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified King. He gets to the nitty-gritty that defines us. In his name is complete and lasting forgiveness. He converts our cold hearts by the warmth of his grace and love for us. He changes our relationship with him. He changes our relationships with one another by the forgiveness of our sins that we then pass on as we forgive those who sin against us. Love listens to the hurt. Love sheds tears where injustice has in occurred. Love seeks to reconcile. But love does not repay evil with evil. Instead, the love of God speaks peace and forgiveness to the enemies. The love of God restores people. The love of Jesus lifts our eyes to the future beyond what is seen. So, in the now but temporary and passing, and looks ahead in conviction and hope to what is unseen. For we know, as we heard already, we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For each person on whatever side of the issues that are, there are that define our lives, God shines the light of hope eternal. There is indeed faith and life beyond this world's affliction. Look to Jesus Christ. Faith sees this one, God in our flesh, guarantee it by his body and blood. These were given and shed once and for all to reconcile every wrong. He will have the last word from the book of Revelation. Listen to this last and lasting word. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Amen. Let us continue now in the confession of our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we now continue with the prayer of the church. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confessions for the sake of your grace and promising deliverance from sin and its curse, so comfort us by the forgiveness of sins and give us hope in the promise of eternal life and your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to your church, O Lord, that as we believe, so we also would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope we have in him, that we too will be raised and brought into his presence. Embolden us by your spirit to confess this Christian faith from a lively conscience, that for Christ's sake, grace may extend to more and more people and increase thanksgiving to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your son was rejected on earth, even by his friends and relatives. <clears throat> Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth, especially those who cannot find agreement within their own families on the word of God, from which life itself comes. Assure them that their stand for your truth is necessary. Guard them from seeking a false or easier peace, and turn us in every earthly disappointment toward the promise of your eternal and undivided church triumphant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, no kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation with its government. Frustrate the work of Satan and the seeds of destruction he would sow in every place where he, were he not stayed by your gracious hand. Unite our leaders and our people for their common good, while leading us to hope in the eternal kingdom that is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. <clears throat> eternal Lord God, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly tent, especially Jack and Rita, Elsie, Klaus and Rita, Emily, Shirley K, Audrey M, Val, Christina, Jean B, John, friend of Gail and Randy, John, friend of Pastor's brother Dan, the indigenous peoples of our land, and these we name before you now. Pray you also grant safe travel to the family of Chris and Sarah and their children, Aliyah and Oliver, who were received by baptism into your holy kingdom last Sunday. Do not let them lose heart in the saving trust placed in your son, but fix their eyes beyond what is transient to the things unseen by every trial now, which in comparison is as a slight momentary affliction Prepare them for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, when, at last, you will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your son's cross, his body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith, that in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. What was lost in paradise has been regained by the conquering wounds of your Son, crucified and raised again. In him we are restored as your children and made bold to ask for every need. Hear us for his sake and in his name, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offerings are in the plate and we acknowledge them as we present them with our hearts and thanksgiving to our Lord. And in a moment I will also prepare the table, the Lord's table. As you're able, please stand and we continue now with the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away. seated. The hymn before distribution, 633, at the Lamb's High Feast, 1, 2, 5, and 8. Thank the Lord. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. 
Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may stand as you are able to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. The closing hymn, verses 1, 2, and 5 and 6, I walk in danger all the way.
Well, the Lord strengthen you and hold you always. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. This peace be with you then.